What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. So we're going to be talking about Jeepers Creepers in this video here today. We'll be going over the ongoing trial between Myriad Pictures, Screen Media, and all of those involved with Jeepers Creepers Were Born, one of the worst abominations ever to be birthed into this world, and how this ties into the development hell that Jeepers Creepers 5 continues to find itself in. So it seems like we've reached the almost tail end of this trial because they're supposed to have something going on in January 2025. They had something this past week or a few days ago, actually, that was just updated when it comes to the trial where Myriad Pictures has requested a few documents from the defendants. In this case, again, Jake Seal and all those responsible for producing Jeepers Creepers 4, allegedly via some fraudulent ways and going about disturbing the rights that Myriad claims it had to the to the distribution and all that stuff related to the IP. So here's what is updated about this trial. It says Myriad is requesting financial records that reflect, refer, or relate to the motion pictures, including but not limited to trial balances, financial records for any Jeepers Creepers motion picture in development. Because again, through this trial, we've been discovering they are developing or trying to develop allegedly a Jeepers Creepers 5. Another one here, they're requesting all bank statements, general ledgers, and financial documents that reflect, refer, or relate to your ability to finance film projects, including but not limited to the motion pictures. Defendants objected to the request on the grounds of attorney work product privilege that it seeks confidential business information subject that disclosure would invade the privacy rights of non-parties to this action, relevance, and overbreadth undue burden and provide unverified responses as follows defendants respond to rfp nos number 60 i don't know what that is that no financial records or trial balances pertaining to jeepers creepers were born are in their custody or control and no financial records exist pertaining to the development of jeepers creepers 5 defendants respond that jeepers creepers were born is not a subsequent production based on the motion picture jeepers creepers 3 and there do not exist financial records pertaining to the development of the motion picture jeepers creepers 5 or any other jeepers creepers motion picture on which this pending lawsuit is based they responded that no financial records are in their possession custody or control and defendants ability to finance projects generically is not relevant to this lawsuit which pertains only to motion pictures derived from Jeepers Creepers 3. Further, the court notes that defendants' unverified responses indicate that the requested financial records regarding Jeepers Creepers Reborn are not in defendants' possession, custody, or control. Defendants contend that co-defendant Screen Media distributed Reborn and received the financial proceeds and will be the entity in possession, custody, and control of the requested financial records along with non-party to this litigation. As such, the court grants in part plaintiff's motion to monetary sanctions in the amount of $2,910, representing six hours of attorney time to prepare the three motions at the hourly rate of $455 plus $180 in filing fees at $60 per motion. Further, the court grants in part plaintiff's request for monetary sanctions and orders defendants Jake Seal, Oral Film Distribution, PVS Studios, and defendants counsel Paul Singleman jointly and severally to pay plaintiff, in this case Myriad Pictures, they're ordering them to be paid monetary sanctions in the amount of $2,910 by and through counsel for plaintiff within 20 days of notice of the court's order. All my legal experts can tap in down below. And friends are losing this trial and Myriad currently has the advantage. It is important to remember that whatever happens here isn't necessarily going to guarantee a quality film coming next. Myriad Pictures just doesn't want to be done dirty like how you or I wouldn't be want to be done dirty. If I was supposed to get a piece, I expect my piece in full and on time, as I would assume many of you would. Michael O'Hoven with his Infinity Films company, like I've been stating, stating, still owns the rights to produce Jeepers Creepers movies. Myriad is alleging that they had their right of first refusal tampered with. They were done dirty and stuff happened after Jeepers Creepers 3. And that's how we ended up here. I'm going to keep saying this until I'm blue in the face, but Jeepers Creepers 5 or whatever movie ends up being a true sequel to 1 and 2 doesn't need the budget that 2 had, which was quite an increase, and it doesn't need the budget that 1 had either. Stars like Jonathan Breck, Gina, Ray Wise, Miss Pat, and any other stars you may want to cast, they are not big names right now, and they are not in demand. I have not seen any of them in anything recently. The most recent person I saw was Miss Pat in a small scene in Deadpool, I believe. You could get away with a similar budget 
that Jeepers Creepers 3 had, around five to six million, cut back on the CGI bullshit, lean on the creature being a menacing force without excessive flying and all the theatrics that were present in the second movie, hire a director and writer that have a horror history, it can be short films for all I care, and this is just a big break opportunity for them. Someone out there we do know is competent and looking to make a name for themselves. Someone out there exists. They just have to be patient and willing enough to seek them out. I can't keep blaming the creator. He has no say whatsoever over the IP. And he didn't make everyone involved with Ford decide to put on the shit show that they did. They got up and decided to do that. So if you can get up and decide to do that, put on a shit show, you can get up and decide to put out something that's watchable. There are so many ways that Jeepers Creepers 5 could end up being quality. But what I'm doing in this video, again, is just going over where we are with the holdup process, which is this trial. Because the trial already has led us down the path to confirm, almost, that the fifth film is what they have planned next. But you're not going to see anything about any Jeepers Creepers movies until this trial is resolved. There's just not going to be anything coming of that. That's why the film itself, the fourth movie, was going through the delays it was going through. All of that was connected to this trial. Nobody involved with it was talking about it when you wanted to bring it up to them. Of course, they're not going to want to confirm these things. Well, honestly, it sounded like some people involved creatively, like the director and the writer, they were completely out of the loop with all of the legality issues. That's the other thing that was very interesting about Reborn. There was a lot of shady business that allegedly went on that hopefully will not carry over into the fifth movie. But I just wanted to make it clear that whatever happens doesn't guarantee that we will get something to quality. But I think we are owed something to quality. I do. I think it's just going to take some people who actually give a damn and want to knuckle down, seek out competent talent and make it happen. You don't need a big budget to put on a quality Jeepers Creepers movie. You just don't. You don't. And I cannot keep blaming Victor Salvo. He has no say. And as much as I love a good nostalgia kick every now and again, I will also stress this. We don't need Trisha. We don't need the Taggarts. We don't need Jonathan Brecht to necessarily return as a creeper. But out of all of them I just mentioned, obviously the one that we could arguably need is Jonathan Brecht because he might be the only person who can capture the mannerisms and the look of the creature. That's all I'm saying when it comes to Jonathan Brecht. I don't even think he's needed because I think it really mostly comes down to the makeup. Outside of that, just mannerisms. If you can mimic those mannerisms, that's amazing. But we don't need to just lean on telling Trisha's story, telling the Taggart story. You can literally do a story like what I proposed before where Kenny and Darla have a child who is now seeking out the monster that killed their parents all those years ago so many different ways you could tackle this you don't have to just go down the well of trisha jenner getting revenge you could open up so many other doors from kenny and darla to maybe some other family members we've met in the past not just the taggarts but like what we saw in the third film with sergeant testigo you can do so many different things it doesn't have to immediately be linked to trisha i actually would prefer the angle of a kenny and darla child over trisha not gonna lie only because of the fact that we have the leaked cathedral script so we can have some closure there in a way with Trisha, even if you don't get the outcome you wanted with Trisha because she dies in that screenplay, spoiler alert. But I would prefer seeing the unknown on, on screen right now. And the unknown for me would be going down the path of exploring a potential new protagonist like a child of Kenny and Darla, someone else related to a character like Tash Digo, someone else maybe related to the Taggarts, and then bounce the story from there. But let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below. If you haven't already, of course, make sure you subscribe, turn on post notifications, so you never miss a video. In the description, I have links to all my social media accounts. I am on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can message me there to let me know if there's any movies, news, or reviews you'd like me to cover in the future. And with all that in mind, guys, I will see you in the next video.